Welcome to another video and uh, today I'm going to show you some benchmarks, 1080p plus benchmarks of Intel's new uh, Skylake processor, the Core i7-6600K and the 6700K uh, processor. Now uh, there hasn't been much 1080p benchmarks on YouTube so I thought this would be a uh, perfect uh, video to show you quickly some of the 1080 benchmarks and compare that to Intel's previous generation processors. First I'm going to show you what Intel processors have been introduced since 2006 and since 2007 they've been implementing this new thing called uh, TikTok. Now to explain what TikTok is, Tik is a die shrink of an e existing macro architecture and Talk is a new uh, macro architecture that they uh, that they introduced on the in, uh, on an existing uh, nanometer. Now, one thing I want to mention is that their new 6700K and the 6600K processors does not come with a heatsink. So, just so you're aware, so it's going to be more expensive than their uh, previous generations. Now, the, you also have to get a new motherboard because this is a LGA 1151 motherboard, socket motherboard. So, you know, if you have a previous generation Intel processor, you'll not be able to uh, uh, upgrade to the 6600 and 6700K. And uh, the 6700K is a four-core processor, and the uh, base clock is a four gigahertz with a turbo frequency of 4.2. And the uh, 6600K is a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz and um, with a turbo frequency of 3.9 gigahertz. Now let's take a look at some gaming benchmark. In Alien Isolation, the uh, 6700K is uh, five frames faster than the lowest uh, which is the 2600K and is virtually a draw between all the uh, previous generation of Intel processors. In uh, Total War Attila there's virtually a dead hit between all the Intel processors from the 2600K all the way up to the 6700K. In uh, GTA 5 uh, the 2600K is about 4 frames less than the uh, 6700K. In uh, Shadow of Mortar as you can see in 4K Ultra settings is virtually a dead hit between all the processors and in uh, the 1080p ultra settings um, the 2600K is less than uh, 2 frames than the 577C so there's not much difference between uh, any of the processors in uh, any of the games. Now the question is would I recommend this processor and the answer is if you're using a processor going back to the 2600K or the 2500K series uh, the answer is absolutely not. There's virtually no reason for you to upgrade. Remember, you have to get a new motherboard, and uh, on top of that, you'll have to spend uh, 50 to maybe $100 on buying a new fan for your heatsink. Now, now, if you're building a brand new system, I would definitely see you uh, buying a Skylake processor for your new system. However, I would definitely want you to take a look at AMD's FX8350 processor or the FX8370 processor which uh, takes up 95 watts in power and uh, I'll have a link um, to our site or blog where I, have, where I show the performance between uh, uh, the FX8350 and uh, the 3770K and you'll get an idea of how that performs uh, against the 6700K uh, based on uh, estimation and since it's an 8 core processor and uh, seems to be more future proof from based on the data we have so now the reason I'd recommend uh, 8 core processor is because if you look at the DirectX 11 app workload versus the DirectX 12 app workload you see uh, there's a significant reduction in speed almost have and that's a significant jump from DirectX 11 to DirectX 12 now do keep in mind that these are preliminary DirectX 12 benchmarks so I can't guarantee that when DirectX 12 games come out next year that you'll see this kind of performance increase so just uh, keep that in mind so I hope you have enjoyed this quick video and uh, feel free to like or subscribe and I hope uh, this has been informative and I thank you for watching